Good morning everybody. This is Hal with an update on the solar panel. You can see I've been doing some work on it uh, on tying up my uh, DuPont panels. Uh, they're pretty much done except for the top row that's still left to be wired in. But the bottom row is all done so that's a thousand watts uh, taken care of right there. And then as you can see the rest of the material, some of it is up here and uh, I had to take a break so uh, um, the roof would dry up because it's been raining and looks like it's drying up okay before I get on the other side of this roof it's like ice when it's when it's wet uh, so I'll show you uh, also what I've done on the on the other side of those panels now that they are connected up there you'll see that uh, they have been uh, connected to the batteries and new uh, battery bank 24 volt battery bank was added to the system as you can see the power from the panel comes through the roof and it, go, it comes down that great pipe or that great conduit I buried it uh, fairly deep in there. Uh, see a little bit of the trench there, and it goes into the shed there, and then it comes in to here. And I it comes in from the bottom to here, and I put in a, uh, a voltage disconnect or a power disconnect, so I can isolate my panels if I ever need to do some work here. And right now it's going to my Flex Max, uh, or Flex, yeah, the Flex Max uh, charge controllers. Uh, this one is the one that's working right now. Uh, and we're putting, we're bringing in, uh, let's see if it'll focus properly. We're bringing in about 26.7 amps, 26 amps uh, at 29 volts. Uh, that's what it's putting out and uh, the power coming in is at 67 volts uh, 12 amps so it's converting 12 amps at 67 volts down to 29 amps at 26.7 volts uh, this one here is just a spare in case this one ever goes out or I need to or I want to add more panels I can simply use that and then my Harbor Freight panels are here and uh, they're working uh, very well also uh, as you can see, um, oops. let's see, go back to here. Uh, we're getting a little bit of power. Right now it's on float charge, as you can see here. So during float charge, uh, really there's no draw in this system whatsoever, and that's going to change as soon as I uh, wire that in. Right now the the uh, uh, power uh, consumption here it's only for these two freezers and they're just not drawing a whole lot of power uh, eventually they're gonna drive the water pump to the house uh, that feeds the pressure to our house and then the well pump as well uh, from that system and that's why that 240 uh, inverter is there is for the well pump and then this one here is a magna sign that's a 24 volt circuit and then that's gonna feed power to the house through this AC disconnect uh, that I put in here. I've also added a 24 volt battery bank that I'll go into more detail later. And that's made up of 12 uh, deep cycle batteries. There is about 2800 amp hours of stored, stored energy there, uh, about 17,000 watts uh, of energy. Uh, and uh, the power from those batteries is coming in from this here from these cables uh, going in through my battery disconnect switch and then goes in here and I can now switch at this point uh, manually where I wanna whether or not I want to feed power to the you know to the magnetron inverter or out to the grid here uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna automate this and uh, what I just did today is I reset my voltage here uh, so that my voltage on my uh, when it's charging in bulk charge, the, like I said, it's right now the uh, 24 volt uh, battery bank that 
uh, voltage uh, when it's full will be higher than the uh, dump load settings on these uh, charge controllers for my wind generators and what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the, the resistive loads from both of these and then those I'm going to wire straight to here so when since these are connected to my 24 volt battery bank as soon as these guys feel that there's a need to dump power that power will be dumped to my uh, uh, grid time inverters here which is 1.7 kilowatts and they'll make power and that way when this thing this thing will never actually finish because it will be always keeping the batteries full the batteries will never be discharged so they won't cycle I mean the rate of discharge on the, the discharge on those batteries will maybe be you know five percent at, at most so I expect a very long longevity on those batteries simply because I'm not going to be cycling them up and down so the plates and besides that I have a, uh, a diesel fader permanently hooked up to those so that's going to get automated from a dump load perspective and uh, um, this what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that AC disconnect and, and put another one of these uh, 30 amp plugs in there because uh, I already wired my uh, power to the house in a uh, with a, um, uh, a generator tra generator transfer panel and what I did is I have this uh, uh, connector that I'll be able to connect up there when I need to and then I'm going to run that into a uh, conduit that's going to get buried in under the ground uh, coming out of the side of the shed here and it's going to come this way to where my power distribution panel is and it's going to come up on the bottom here follow this and come straight up the wall to this which is already wired in so that will feed my house if I ever require um, power from an extended outage uh, it's right next to my power panel this is my other grid tie system from my uh, I have another um, uh, two kilowatts of uh, solar power from my sharp panels that use the micro inverters uh, and those are already permanently wired here so there's you know a couple kilowatts going in there and this is the power that's going to be brought in so I'm going to have a plug a female plug that I'll just plug in here uh, and that will be ready to go. I'll just simply have everything ready to go with a plug just unplugged here and whenever I need to switch to uh, my standby power it'll be a fairly easy affair to do so. Um, now I don't have to spend a whole lot of money on automatic transfer panels and that kind of stuff. So things are pretty much set up right now the way they should be. Uh, as you can see I have my you know uh, disconnects for the solar panel the ability to switch from this guy that will feed my home to the ones that will feed my grid automatically through the dump loads on those two uh, turbine uh, charge controllers as well as my 12 volt battery bank that also has its own set of disconnect switches to disconnect all the power from the circuits or disconnect power to the inverters um, the system has its own dedicated ground system that comes out of this box and goes outside to an 8 foot copper rod that's buried in the ground uh, so my DC circuits, all of these DC circuits have their own ground uh, separated from the grounds in the home um, and the only thing that's left to do now is automate some of the processes and wire in uh, things like the, uh, the remotes uh, uh, the, um, the battery monitor kit as well as the remote uh, temperature sensor for the batteries and once I bring the power into this magnet sign through this junction box here uh, then uh, if I have for whatever reason I don't have enough wind or solar uh, for a long period of time then this guy will keep my batteries fully charged in the eventuality that I need to do so. Uh, as you can see right now we're uh, bringing in about 
uh, let's see, we're bringing in 20, 28 amps of power and it's pushing out 29.2 volts. If I turn on my GTIs right now, uh, we should see the power being turned on. And it has been turned on. And you can see that's 1.7 kilowatts of power going in there. And we can see that the power has gone up, power output. The voltage has gone down 27 volts, 26.9. My amperage has gone up to 30.5. So what I want to be able to do is have those two dump loads automatically take it up and down where I need it to be, keep my batteries at a fairly uh, you know uh, steady level where the ups and downs on the charge is maybe no more than you know a couple of volts. So that way my battery stayed fully charged and not sulfate. Uh, right now, my only way of doing that is doing this manually, so what I've learned to do for right now is I'm just unplugging GTIs and having only one work at a time, and then that will limit how fast I'm discharging those, so I don't over discharge it if I'm not paying attention to it. Um, pretty soon that 12 volt circuit will also power all of this. So everything here will be fully automated. Uh, we're almost there now. So anyways, I just wanted to catch you up on this and uh, kind of show you what I've been up to. Hopefully in about a month, everything will be fully completed. Thanks, take care, and God bless.